Hello and welcome to this edition of Intelligent Video Today. I'm your host, Steve Von Rahar from Intelligent Research. Joining us on today's episode, Tim Adelman, CTO over at Meet You. Welcome, Tim. Welcome, Steve. Nice to be here. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, uh, Meet You, uh, it's kind of funny to be talking to you on Intelligent Video Today because uh, Meet You for a long time has been a leader in the video conferencing business and uh, in the in the collaboration realm as opposed to pure video. But uh, uh, you were one of the first players in conferencing, but uh, uh, you've made a big pivot uh, over the years uh, to really address the virtual event marketplace as, as well. Uh, tell us how Meet You is positioning itself today and how, how you're addressing the virtual event market in, in current times. Yeah, sure. So today we are positioned in the virtual event market. Um, basically, we are in between the, the very uh, VR-based metaverse solutions and the plain, I would say, website-based solutions. And we identify as an immersive event experience. So it's still browsable by any regular user without any any devices it's 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 a website but it looks more immersive than just your I don't know, amazon uh, um, website so that's where we are we are in the enterprise business um and we are also serving um a webcasting solution um to our customers we still have a little bit revenue with our telephone conferencing but as you already said we we pivoted away from that uh, years so, uh, and with that webcast and with that virtual event capability that you're looking at, you're really diving in uh, deep into the video AI realm. Uh, a couple months ago, you launched uh, uh, this uh, application called Event Guru. Tell us a little bit about that initiative and uh, uh, how you're looking to leverage artificial intelligence uh, to enhance virtual events. Mm -hmm. So over... Over all the time, we always um, tinkered around with AI and all these solutions. So we, we looked at image models, we looked at video models, we looked at language models, and some of these solutions really sticked. And we thought, okay, we have a lot of content on our platform. And we also see that our customers, they invest a lot of money in these digital events. They invest until the, the day of the live event. They, they produce a lot of video uh, live. Um, they, they produce it before the event. They produce PDFs, documents. They get sponsors. So they do a lot before the event and during the event. And we thought, how can we make that more usable? And we can. how can we increase the utility of all that investment? Um, and that's where we um, got also into AI and, and saw that this data is easily searchable with AI and it can be just uh, be um, easier to consume after the event. Because if we are if we are fair to ourselves, everyone loves the attention of a live event, but nobody watches the hour long keynotes afterwards. Um, and that's and that's, I think, really a gap in the market, um, the post event phase. And that's where we are. Um, we are going into. Now, you're looking at AI as a tool that can both enhance the experience of attendees as well as the uh, event uh, administrators, or organizers as well. First, let's talk about some of the ways that you're taking AI to enhance uh, the capabilities or the platform for those event organizers that are implementing your solution. Mm -hmm. So as I already said, the event organizers invest a lot of money in this in this video production. And afterwards, what they get is basically MP4s and their task, their quest is to, to um, create marketing content for the next event, perhaps. So nowadays they use marketing agencies and they need someone with domain knowledge who watches over all these hours of video content so we can serve them with doing it for them. So we can, we can automatically search the content for the best content pieces. We can uh, also post process all the videos in terms of uh, chapters, uh, summaries. Um, so we can, we can create a lot of content uh, based on the original event content, which can be used for marketing for next, uh, for the next edition or as executive summaries to just serve also the, um, the attendees after the event. Additionally to that, of course, it, uh, AI can also help in, in looking through the tremendous data that is gathered throughout the event and can just bring insights right at the fingertips to the event organizers. Literally, you're enhancing productivity for the event organizer. It would take hours and hours and hours to go through that content. But if you're able to do so on an automated basis, it, uh, it allows the organizations to repurpose their content a little bit more effectively, doesn't it? Yeah, 100%. 
Yes. So, so you have the the AI solutions uh, making the solution better for event organizers. How about event attendees? Uh, how can their experience be enhanced through better use of AI? Mm -hmm. So, first of all, during the event, the attendees are confronted with a lot of different options. They can they can uh, they can go to booths. They can visit uh, keynotes. They can meet other like-minded uh, uh, participants. So, first of all, during the event, they can use and enhance and. Uh, uh, utilize AI to make better decisions with their time. So they can find the right um, the right sessions to watch, the right exhibitors to visit, et cetera, et cetera. And after the event, perhaps they, they had a very good chat with an exhibitor and they missed a keynote, but they do not want to watch the one, one hour long keynote after the effect. So they can easily, again, find the best keynote, but they can also distill the keynote based on their, um, on, on their profile. So they can go into the keynote and ask questions directly and say, hey, what was the core statement? Can you give me a summary? Um, where, do I where do I find uh, information X, Y, Z? So it's really also um, making it more efficient for the attendee after the event and during the event to save time doing the right decisions and get the right content. Now, uh, when we've talked before, you've talked about the concept for attendees that uh, some of the value comes from their ability to talk to a video. Uh, explain a little bit about uh, what, what you mean by that, how that works, and, uh, and uh, the features that it, it makes possible. Mm -hmm. So talking to a video is uh, actually quite simple. You have, a, you have a video source with a bunch of metadata, who, who spoke when, what slide has been clicked, what overlay has been seen, perhaps even questions that have been asked or reactions. And then you can basically ask questions to the video like, hey, provide me a summary. Uh, give, me, give me a timestamp which I should watch if I'm interested in topic X. Um, all these things can be done way faster always with the with the context of the video so it allows the participants to to also um, explore and experience video content that has already been done in the past um, and actually the same tool allows organizers to to create follow-up video material and then it's not only talk to video but they can obviously also talk to the whole event and do this on a much larger scale so many cool things happening and uh, so many doors are open from an application perspective with AI. Uh, it, it really opens your eyes in terms of what the future holds. But let's take a step back for a second and talk about how you're actually developing these capabilities. Uh, are, are these solutions that you're developing in-house or is this uh, you're putting out calls to generative AI uh, solutions like ChatGPT? Uh, uh, how, how do you go about making this a reality? Mm -hmm. So there's obviously a very complicated stack of AI at the very end. And I think this is your question, what LLM are we using? We are constantly monitoring um, the space around open open source LLMs, but also enterprise competitors like uh, OpenAI, Anthropic, Google, Amazon, um, Microsoft. And we just, we, we are also constantly benchmarking these different LLMs against each other. And we made the decision that we go with the current market leader, which is OpenAI. There's the, it's just the truth, right? It just performs better. And we, we go with that um, as long as we hit obstacles, but we keep our solution open that we can switch LLMs um, throughout the process and can just say, okay, maybe task task A is, is also easier to be done with, with open source. We are currently not planning on training our own AI because I think, I mean, to be honest, we cannot compete with A open source and B uh, open AI. This just... I don't think anyone can, not even Google and Microsoft and Amazon. I mean, they showed clearly that OpenAI is still faster than them. So we just we just stick with a with a winner for now and to get our solution out the door. As a developer, did you get some indigestion watching the recent drama uh, in in the boardroom uh, there at OpenAI? Did that influence uh, or make you start looking harder at uh, at other solutions? Um, yeah, we watched at the at the drama, but I. At the end of the day, the benchmark and what model is is the best just counts. And uh, I think even if OpenAI stopped uh, now but left their APIs open, it would still take uh, Google and the other big companies quite some time to catch up. And once they catch up, I think the good thing about these LLMs, they are um, inherently democratic. The, the, the interface is, is straightforward. You send text, you receive text, that's it. And it should be fairly simple to swap them out if you if you
say, okay, open AI doesn't, doesn't deliver best results anymore. But at the end of the day, um, if we trust a company with our data, the trust is very, very important. And I'm like, I'm not sure where open AI is on a, on a trust level, to be honest. Yeah. So trust is one element. Uh, when you're looking at AI development, another uh, area that people look at are, are both security and privacy. Uh, when you're developing event guru, uh, how did uh, you see those factors influencing uh, your selection of maybe specific features to include in your virtual event platform? So first and foremost, it's very important to, to treat data you have um, with, with like uh, white gloves, right? You need to think twice, do I now send this request to, to an LLM or not? So this is, this is the first uh, very important thing. So whenever we do something with customer data, we will ask customer and ask for their consent and we will do the proper paperwork. Another, another aspect of this, and um, I think this is very important also for OpenAI to be enterprise secure and they have their own program. But another very important uh, development over, over the couple um, last months is that Microsoft invested very, very much money in them, a, a, lot, a lot of money, and they have their own Azure OpenAI where they say and where they claim, hey, it's, uh, Microsoft uh, enterprise level security and that's a that's a neat gateway to AI and um, also recently a a big German car manufacturer announced that they that they trust this Microsoft open AI uh, implementation so much that they will give access to all of their employees and I think this is a very very strong signal in the market that Microsoft is 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 the trusted partner not open AI and I mean, at the end of the day, if we cannot trust Microsoft, I mean, uh, like, okay. I don't know, one third or two thirds of all businesses would have would have problems. So I think it's safe to assume that if Microsoft stands there and says, hey, this is enterprise level uh, data, privacy, security, we, we just should trust it. So uh, uh, and that type of security, that type of uh, reassurance uh, is is a key part to driving adoption over time. Uh, another part of driving adoption over time is just the the march of new applications that are coming down the pike. Where do you see AI impacting uh, the virtual event experience? Say over the the three to five year period, what applications are uh, coming around or on the horizon uh, uh, that are going to be made possible by future AI enhancements? Do you think? So sometimes AI is, uh, is compared to digitization, right? And uh, what, like whatever digitization was was uh, the topic uh, of the talks, they always say, okay, digitization will touch every aspect of our lives. And I mean, that's where we are now, right? So I think we can, we can assume that AI will try to touch a lot of aspects. Uh, what it definitely can do very good is, is process data. So in the, in the event space, whenever you are consuming content consuming data processing data you should um, be prepared that ai will somehow make your job easier i think the the consumption and creation of content is is in the because virtual events are marketing tools and marketing is about uh, creating content consuming content etc so ai will enhance the the funnel of created content and will also help you to distill the content down to what actually interests you and Overall, I think in a couple of years, AI will just talk to each other and we will just never talk to each other. We will just talk to AI to create content and we will ask AI to just give us a summary for five year olds of like, I don't know, 200 pages of AI generated content. Um, apart from that, there's obviously the, um, the, the fake news aspect, but I think as an attendee or as an, as an organizer um, and thinking about digital events as platforms for information sharing, AIs will step into to make that information sharing and consumption much more efficient. Uh, fascinating, fascinating stuff. We're on the precipice of uh, uh, a really interesting set of time in the, in the virtual event marketplace uh, due to the emergence of AI. Uh, Tim Adelman, CTO of Meet You, thanks so much for taking the time to visit with us today. Thank you, Steve, for having me. And we thank you for taking the time to join us for today's episode. Uh, to get access to future Intelligent Video Today interviews with thought leaders like Tim Adelman, subscribe to the YouTube channel for Intelligent Video Today right below. For Intelligent Research and Intelligent Video Today, I'm Steve Onderhaar. Thanks for your time.